All right, hi everybody, Grit21, back with another tutorial video, which I haven't done in a really long time. So this video is sort of a tutorial video for people who use NVIDIA graphics cards. And for those of us especially like overclocking like myself, um, you might have noticed this, you may not have noticed this, uh, but I thought it was really helpful so that I make a video about it. So a couple nights ago, I was playing World of Tanks, and I noticed that my megahertz on my GPU was significantly low. It was around like uh, 890 uh, megahertz or so, and it just it was very choppy, very unstable, and was really, really bugging me, and, it, and I couldn't figure out why. Well, I went to go look at my NVIDIA control panel, and on my in my uh, manage 3d settings I have my power management set to adaptive so but what adaptive does is that it basically uh, will change your core clock on your GPU based on whatever you know basically trying to save energy the whole saving energy thing which is absolutely in my opinion ridiculous and if, you, if your electric bills pay just use your power come on so it was kind of irritating to feel like that my performances of my game was being affected so significantly so i went into my program settings and i looked up world of tanks and i also and i noticed that of course is using the global setting of adaptive rather than prefer maximum performance so for the sake of testing i'm actually going to go ahead and load up uh, world of tanks and i'll show you what the megahertz speed is and of course right now you know the clock's fluctuating because because you know I'm I'm encoding this video while I'm also doing the uh, um, you know while playing the game, so the clock the core clock might be a little bit skewed. I'm gonna try not to let that be a big deal. If I'm gonna quick change my encoding down to about uh, there we go, that should be all right. So I'm gonna go ahead and just change that down, and maybe that won't affect the GPU. And I'll show you what I mean after I get the game loaded. All right, so here we are in World of Tanks. Um, we're just sort of sitting in the garage right now, and as you can see by uh, GPU-Z, the core clock is not exactly the highest. I think that could definitely be higher. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and jump into a quick little match here, and you can watch the FPS and, and core clock and how much it fluctuates. And to me, it just it seems like that the FPS is just really, really low. And it may seem kind of silly to nitpick at low FPS, but you know, in certain games and high I uh, high-paced games like you know people play CS:GO or people play World of Tanks or people play you know Rise of Tomb Raider or things like that. Any other any game that requires a significant amount of precision, it's important to have your core you know that those frames there and to have anything less than that just is completely unacceptable. And of course, right now you know it wants to <laughs> not demonstrate what what I wanted to do, but I swear the other night it was like significantly lower than it than it actually was. Um, I don't know if I need to. Uh, I don't know if closing this has anything to do with it or not. Uh, I'll be right back. Hold on. Okay, so I I uh, kind of apparently just turning off the window capture seemed to have uh, completely uh, affected that. So right now the core clock says it's running at uh, uh, six hundred. Uh, sorry, nine hundred and sixty three point five with a FPS of sixty seven up to seventy or so. And as I kind of look around, the frames sort of you know go a little lower and stuff and it may not seem like a huge deal and these people are shooting at me I'm just running around for the sake of testing and stuff let me uh, shoot this guy here boom <laughs> that was easy um, you know th the frames fluctuate way too much in my opinion that should just not be a thing and I'm just gonna probably just gonna die and stuff so let me just you know for the sake of testing in the name of science okay yeah so the clock ramped up a bit so again fluctuating clock not stable that's not cool we're gonna go do what i'm gonna do is gonna go back to nvidia control panel i'm gonna set it to um uh you know a complete you know full power performance and stuff and i will show you what this looks like yes i understand world tanks is already running thank you <laughs> we'll be right back Okay, so we are back in the NVIDIA control panel after exiting the game, and as I mentioned before, you know, the setting was set to adaptive, so we're just going to go ahead and set it to maximum performance. I'm going to click apply, and we're going to have to load up the game, and the annoying thing is, I don't think this applies. Uh, you can't apply the setting while the game is open, I don't think. I don't seem to really, like, I haven't been able to test this, but I, it's just better if I just say, just restart the game anyway, just make sure it does apply and does work, so we're going to load up World Tanks. 
Uh, hi everybody, I forgot to mention something too. Uh, when you, Whenever you go to update your NVIDIA graphics driver, there is a possibility that your managed 3D settings could be reset entirely. So if that happens, just simply go back into your video control panel, reset your settings to prefer maximum performance on the program settings, and it should finally be restored to the full power settings that you had set up before your graphics card driver update. So just wanted to quick insert that, forgot to mention it, but I thought that was important and I thought I'd let you guys know. Okay, you can go back and watch the video now. Thanks. Again, and we're going to then test the theory, but of course it should work. But as you can see already, according to the window capture that I have, uh, 1189.7, so it did apply the setting, and we should notice significant uh, higher frames per second, and we'll just load it up and see what we got. Okay, so we're in the game. We're going to go ahead and click battle and we're going to hopefully see much higher frames, more stable frames per second. And I don't exactly like this map, but you know what? Whatever. This is kind of a tough one to play. Uh, but give me a minute to uh, load this up and we should hopefully see. So we're running about uh, 72, 77 and look how fast that uh, that map texture loaded, which was pretty quick. Uh, and as you can probably see in the top, sorry, the top left corner, um, you'll see the FPS went up to went, just went up to 90 and stuff. Of course, it's going to fluctuate. It's not going to be stable, but it is significantly higher. There's some slight choppiness. I think that's just input lag. Ooh, 105 F. Ooh, 107 FPS. 110, 113. Wow, that's impressive. So that one setting alone just completely changes the game, literally, um, as far as its performance and go and stuff goes. Um, so to maybe go, I don't know if I explained in the beginning, but again, what the adaptive setting versus performance setting does is that it tells the graphics card, you know, I want to, I prefer power saving or I prefer maximum performance. And just based on changing those two settings significantly, um, just really increases the FPS, your gameplay, you might notice might be a little bit more smoother. Um, the adaptive setting, I think, is honestly annoying. I can see it where you wouldn't want your, clock, your card to be clocked all the time and have it be that you know constant high frame rate and stuff but um, it's definitely worth a try if I cannot die that'd be great which I'm probably going to but you know what for the sake of science so <laughs> I'm actually a lot better at this game than what you're seeing right now but um, just a setting to try again if you have an Nvidia graphics card we're just gonna spectate some people here if you have an Nvidia graphics card you'll see that you know this this setting is available to you just open up your Nvidia control panel left uh, right click on your desktop in fact I'm gonna go ahead and go through that tutorial again let me uh, show my desktop here I'm gonna do I'm gonna turn off the game capture and minimize the game so you're gonna go ahead and uh, right click, left click on video control panel. You're going to go to your uh, manage 3D settings, which uh, mine's already pre selected, so it just w goes there automatically. And you will, the downside is that you will have to select every game. And that includes, like, you know, World of Tanks, uh, Rise of Tomb Raider, um, you know, CSGO, stuff like that. Go through your Steam library, go through what, you know, think about what games you think could utilize that higher FPS and stuff or that, that maximum performance. Um, like, for example, I don't have... So, you know, Lara Croft and the Guardian of Light is a pretty intensive game. I would say prefer maximum performance. Hit apply and then... Uh, it is, of course, now applied to that specific game, and you should notice a difference. So I hope this was helpful for those of you who overclock. Um, even things like uh, Haven and, and Valley Benchmark were an option to add as the you know prefer maximum performance. You'll get you know higher scores, which is always great, and stuff like that uh, may throw your scoring a little bit, but you know no one has to know that. But uh, otherwise, just a little quick tutorial. Uh, something I discovered I thought was very helpful and pretty cool and was interesting. I didn't realize it was affecting it that much. Um, I Power savings great, but only up to a point. So there you go. So I hope this is helpful. If you guys have questions, please comment down below. And until then, I'll catch you guys later.